How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian, and it's Thursday here on the show, and you know what that means? Actually, you don't know what that means. You know a little bit. You know we got a lot to talk about here today, but also, last night was AEW Dynamite. In lovely Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And our own Lance Storm was there at the show live. And he had a good time. And so we're going to talk to Lance today about his thoughts on that show. He'll be joining us along with Mike Sempervivi, all three of us on the program today. we got a lot to talk about uh, regarding the Dynamite show and where we are going heading into Wembley and plenty more. And of course, in addition to that, A lot of updates on a lot of different stories, including the AW media rights deal. Stephanie Vecure is headed to WWE, and we've got more details on what happened there. We've got all of the ratings notes from the last couple of days. A lot of news coming out of Mexico. Uh, Not just the Stephanie story, but Chris Jericho is working the CMLL 91st anniversary show against Mystico was one of the biggest stars in all of Lucha Libre. Samoa Joe's going to be out of action for a while. We have got uh, a lot of notes on the TNA NXT deal. Ratings from the last couple of days. And, uh, and of course, all of the news coming out of Dynamite. And there was plenty of it, uh, including the winners of the Men's and Women's Owen Hart Cup Tournament. We know who will be getting championship matches coming up at Wembley. And we've also got big-time championship matches coming up on free television. And we'll talk about how all of that might play into Wembley as well. So we will be uh, taking your text messages, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. F4WOnline at gmail.com. F4WOnline threads, Instagram, and Cameo. At Brian Alvarez on X. And we got some site news to talk about after the break. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And Lance Storm is joining us here as well. Hello, Lance. How you doing, Brian? Hello, Mike. Hi, Brian. Okay, everyone to be quiet now for a second. All right. All right, very quickly, I got to make a couple of uh, in-house notes, all right? First off, uh, we do have some changes with the website that I want to tell people about because some of you, like, today's the day for you. So the uh, video.f4wonline.com, we used to have two tiers. There was a $7.99 tier and a $9.99 tier. And actually, there's another funny thing I'll mention in a second. But So we had a $7.99 and a $9.99. And the difference was for $9.99, you could watch live and on demand. $7.99, you could only watch on demand, okay? So as of today, $7.99 is going to be gone. We're trying to simplify everything. There is going to be one tier. It is $9.99. And if you're on the $7.99 tier, you will get a refund when that tier disappears. And then you will have to sign up for $9.99 if you want to continue to get video. And that's going to be it. Like everything we're trying to simplify, video, main site, audio, we're going to have three different options. So video will just be $9.99. If you're up, you can watch the shows live. And if you're not up, you can watch the shows on replay. So that's that's the video tier. The audio tier, we will be adding Apple Podcasts pretty much at any time. I have been uh, putting all the shows on Apple Podcasts, getting them all ready. Uh, The full archives will not be there because it's impossible. We would have to manually upload about 15,000 shows, which just is not going to happen. But if you only want the podcast, you don't care about video, but you're on Apple, iTunes, they used to call it, uh, they will all be available there. And that is also $9.99. You will get uh, Observer Radio, Observer Live, Brian and Vinny Show, Figure 4 Daily, Filthy 4 Daily. And at some point, other shows will be added as well. It will be, uh, you know, we got to train everybody to also upload their shows to Apple Podcasts. But if you uh, just want audio, you don't want the main site, you don't want to pay fourteen ninety nine for everything, you just want to pay nine ninety nine and get your podcast every day. Apple Music is going to be the option for you. And yes, we are working on Spotify. But listen, I'm not the tech guy. I don't know when. I don't know how. I don't know anything about it. I've just been told that's going to be next. 
We're going to work on that next after Apple Podcasts. That's also nine ninety nine, and yes, that includes the Granny Show. So then, the main site will be fourteen ninety nine, and that's where you can get everything. You can get all of the podcasts, all of the archives, all of the newsletters, all of the archives, the board, uh, subscriber exclusive articles, all of that. If you just want everything, it's fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Somehow we we created a fourteen ninety nine tier for video. I don't even know how, and uh, I think we were considering doing something or whatever. But anyway, we never announced it or anything. But somehow people found it, and they've all signed up. I don't want to say all, but, like, they just decided they wanted to pay fourteen ninety nine. So I think we're going to get rid of that one. So if you're on fourteen ninety nine, you'll get $5 off to the nine ninety nine. But it got me thinking, maybe we should have, like, a $100 tier. Like, if you really like it, just <laughs> sign up for fun and support the site. But anyway, so those will be the three options. Main site, $14.99. If you want the video only, all the shows, it's $9.99. And if you want audio only on Apple Podcasts, it's $9.99. It'll be simple. We'll be sending out an email. We're going to be doing things to uh, um, to do all of that. And apparently, I've been told, Apple is ready. F4WOnline.com slash Apple. If you want to pay $9.99, if you're not a subscriber right now, or if you, you know... Just decided I can't pay I can't pay fourteen. Apple Podcasts is now ready for you. F4Wonline.com slash Apple. You can go up there and sign up right now and start getting the shows on Apple Podcasts immediately. So head up there and check that out. And uh, one other thing, and Lance would know about this. I was on Twitter the other day and I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> this place sucks. It's a cesspool. Like it's horrible. And I have made the decision that I am not completely done with, with Twitter. If you want to go to my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez, my ex, I will repost things from at 1F4W, the main site. That's all I'm doing on there. If you want anything else with me, you're going to have to subscribe. Now, if you're hearing this and thinking, why would I ever do that? I don't know. You don't have to. You don't ever have to do this. But... If you want my tweets, my whatever, I'm going to be putting all of the ratings, the ratings notes up. I put up a ton of news over the last couple of days. And honestly, most importantly, and one of the main reasons I'm doing this is because I used to like to actually like respond to people on Twitter. Oh, you have a question? Here's the answer. Oh, you want to know about this? You want to do a Q&A, whatever? I can't do that on normal Twitter. Because I post anything, and there's 85,000 morons, bots, whatever. It's, like, impossible to sift through. So if you want to, like, ask me questions, subscribe on my X. And my goal is to answer everybody's questions. If I post a rating and go, hey, why do you think this? I'll try to answer it. I, I plan to actually have a discourse with anybody who is a subscriber on Twitter and I'll put news up there. Yes, Mike? You I too? Have a question. Yes. I, is there going to be pictures of shoot bunkhouses? I'll, I'll do it. All my pictures will go up there. I'll do videos here and there, like all of that. It's like, that's my Twitter now. And if you don't want to subscribe, guess what? I probably don't want you on there anyway. So get out of here. But for the rest of you that like want to have a... Go like, to the YouTube comment section. Oh, right my along. God. That's part of it, too. It's like, you know, Vinny tried to do a live show the other day talking talking TNA, and he couldn't figure out how to get it members only, so he had to go free. Oh, and, no. like, he was like, I'm never doing this again. This free <laughs> chat is just a disaster. And it's true. It's sad. But here's the fact, everybody. I don't care if you subscribe to anything, but I am no longer doing anything on the Internet for free. Because everything free on the internet sucks. The free YouTube chat sucks. Free forums suck. Free Twitter su It all sucks. So if I have to charge four ninety nine to weed out all the idiots, I'll do it. If you want to pay, if you want to interact and, you know, have an actual fun time on Twitter slash X with me, then it's four ninety nine. If not, don't do it. Because, again, if you don't want to do it, I probably don't want to interact with you on Twitter. So, anyway, that's it. And actually, no, Lenny, uh, most idiots won't pay. 
I have found because I have a lot of subscription options and there's almost no idiots on there at this point. It, it Listen, I'd rather have five idiots than 50,000 idiots or whatever I'm at Twitter, 170,000 idiots. I'd rather have like 10 non-idiots or 10 idiots or whatever than whatever. So anyway, hey, Lance, how'd you like that uh, Calgary Dynamite? Uh, it was a good time. I got to see a lot of people I hadn't seen in a lot of years. Um, Did I, you go backstage? I yeah, I was just backstage. I went down at around one in the afternoon with Don Callis and Alex Marvez and uh, chatted with... Didn't he write Death of WCW? Uh, <laughs> something like that, yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, so I got to see Jerry Lynn. Um, actually, Jerry Morrow of Stampede. Stampede Jerry was there? Up. Yep. Wow. It was really cool. Um, Jeff Jarrett came up to say hi to him. And I guess they did a Japan tour in the early to mid nineties for SWS and Jerry remembered him and they talked about their trip to Japan. So it was a really cool day seeing a lot of good people. Um, I watched the majority of the show um, from the announcer's room backstage, but uh, got to see a lot of people met Tony very briefly. He he's a busy man at TV, but he took uh, 30 seconds out of his day and I got to meet him. So did he run up and just give you the biggest hug ever and mention something from like Smoky mountain wrestling? No, we didn't even have that much time. He was literally in a meeting, I assume with creative, and he literally just stuck his head out the door real quick and said, hi, and welcome, and nice to meet you, and he went back to his meeting. Wow. Well, listen, I got a million questions for you after the break. We'll do a full uh, review of Dynamite, and I got more tonight on the Brian and Vinny Show. But back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, let's ask Lance anything here for a while. I may not get answers, Lance, but my first question... I know you don't like to uh, break kayfabe or give any scoops or anything like that, but uh, can you at least confirm that old Luther is alive? Um, he is alive. Okay. This dude took a flip bump off the stage through tables. I was yes. like, Luther? Wow. Mm -hmm. He doesn't take many bumps. No, he, he doesn't. To, he'll take a big one. <laughs> he took, and it was a great bump, too. That First dude ran and leaped and flipped and crashed through those tables. I was like, man, look at this guy. That was great. That was a heavy angle to close the show. Yeah. So did you watch the, the actual like whole show while you were back there, or were you just hobnobbing? I'm, well, I hobnobbed throughout the day just chatting with people, but I missed the first, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, because it starts at 6 o'clock local, so it was sort of a, oh, crap, it's 6.20. The show's on. I wouldn't mind seeing it. And that's when Don took me to the announcer's room where they had a monitor that was good and some comfortable chairs, so I sat there with uh, a few of the guys and watched pretty much everything from halfway through the Danielson match on until uh, the first match of Collision was over. How can you hang out with these creeps? This well, I've Don. known Don for 30 years. He just sort of grows on you. I see. Like, like, a, a, like a fungus, exactly. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. a fungus. Chatted with Jerry Lynn quite a bit, which was great. Yeah. I hear that... Um... What's his name? QT Shredded. Is that right? He was taking photos, and it was just like, oh, my God, he looks amazing. I don't know if he's dieting for a competition or what, but he looked like a billion dollars. Wow. Well, we're going to talk about the uh, Dynamite show here in a little while. We can get some of your thoughts, but uh, mention a couple of news stories related to it. So they announced some big matches coming up, including MJF and Will Ospreay for the international title for free on television next week. And obviously, you know, there are a couple of reasons for this. I mean, when they first announced it, I mean, I just figured, okay, well, MGF's beating Osprey. MGF's going to go on a heel tear, going to beat Pac, going to beat a bunch of other people. And then Will Ospreay will challenge him at Wembley, and that will be Will Ospreay's big title win at Wembley this year, is beating MGF for the international title. So obviously part of this is setting up Wembley. But the other part is the media rights deal is uh, it's still unsigned. And we talked about this last night with Dave. I mean, one of the things they're doing is they're trying to load this show up as they reach the red zone, as Tony referred to it as. The goal line. Because, you know, it's it's such an irony that, you know, they're in a contract year and they're way down from where they were last year at this time. 
And meanwhile, like however many years ago it was, it was like WWE, they were having double digit declines, double digit declines, double digit declines. The thing was absolutely horrible. And then suddenly they ended up in a contract year and like everything went up that year. And so they signed this giant deal as a result of that. You know, they were going to make a giant, they were going to do a giant deal anyway. But just the irony that of all years for WWE to have a good year, it just happened to be contract year. And of all the years for AEW to have a not good year, it also happens to be a contract year. Well, so. especially because Tony Khan is involved in all of the sports. In sports, you call that your contract year. You know, the guy who you're not sure about re-signing for all that money ends up having a, a huge year, and then you sign him up, and then the next year they either kind of fall off or they get hurt or something like that. And I think that's been the case, even though the losses were much bigger the last time around. That's kind of been the case with WWE, I think, a couple of times over the years where they were kind of having some, you know, down periods, uh, you know, some some malaise at times. And then, amazingly, they always end up turning it around enough where they end up with massive deals. And I think the important thing here is because, you know, we've got the usual, well, the diehards, you know, who cares about ratings or whatever. They're, they're going to get a You know what? They are probably going to get a good deal. I would expect... That they'll probably get like one point. My, here's my official prediction exactly. 1.4 times what they're getting now. Just under one and a half times. That's what I think they're going to do. Now, is that bad? Of course not. Is that good? Yeah. But you know what? It'd be cool to get double. It'd be cool to get, you know, better than that. If they were doing significantly better, they might do better than 1.4 times. And to me, you know, it's... Yeah, 1.4 is great. That's nothing to complain about. That's not a failure. You know, the internet will say it's a failure, but it's not. It's very good. But you can always try to do better. That's that's my thoughts. The internet will never know until Tony Khan actually releases any numbers that we can find out about and, and really understand what the business is. Because the fact of the matter is, with it being a private company, we don't know what he's put into it. We don't know if WBD is a monetary partner and has been a monetary partner what have they put in you're never really going to know so people are going to look at that number but the way tony khan is talking about it he's saying once he gets it everything that he's put into it so far will be complete and he'll be whole and things will be good for the future and regardless of where you stand on things whether it be wwe aew tna mlw anybody the more money that any company can get from a network, that's just more money you have that can filter down and help out a lot of people, regardless of what you think about what their product is on screen. And you know, the other thing, too, is that if they got the exact same amount of money, if they got no increase, like they're already set up for years. I mean, you can cut people, you can cut costs. I mean, they don't need 250 people in her contract or whatever. He happens to be a billionaire. There's well, not th not just that. I'm just saying, as a business, you but don't need 250 people or however many under no. contract. No, you. you don't. There's a lot of ways that you can cut costs. I mean, what they're making now. I mean, they would be fine for years. Getting another, you know, whatever 40 percent, that would be awesome. But there's a lot of ways to cut costs if need be. It's not like if they got the same money, they would be in dire straits. They might be for a little while until they, you know, made some changes financially. But I think everything is going to be all right with AEW. But things could always be better if perhaps they were doing, you know, comparable to WWE in terms of like, look at NXT. I mean, they're up significantly, significantly year over year. So... Stephanie Vacure, talk about this. I'm sure you talked about this yesterday, Mike. I did. So, a couple of clarifications on everything. So, she did grow up a fan of, of WWE, and she has always wanted to be a WWE superstar. So, you know, there was some reports yesterday, perhaps even from our site, that she never seriously considered AEW, and I have been told that that is actually not true. And that, in fact, she did consider both sides. And I can tell you that from the AEW side, 
I mean, they thought that they had her. And she has had tryouts with WWE before. And, you know, one of the things is that, especially with NXT, you know, the offers that come to start in NXT, they're not that big. And AEW does not have an NXT. And so for a lot of people, it's like, okay, well, how much is AEW offering me? How much is WWE offering me? And I was told that AEW made a very good deal. And to the point where they thought, okay, she's she's going to come here. And what happened was, obviously, WWE changed their offer, and she made the decision to go there. And that, of course, caused a lot of issues with people that she worked for. You know, she had a lot of dates that were booked. And, you know, once you sign with WWE, and it's kind of funny, like, you know, Dave was talking about how, you know, once you sign, like, you can't. But in the past, I mean, there have been people who have finished off their dates elsewhere. I mean, you remember that um, Carl Carl Anderson. I think it was Carl Anderson. Remember he signed, and, like, the idea was, well, he's going to go back to New Japan and, and drop his title or whatever. And people were, like, insistent, that ain't going to happen. And as it turned out, they let him do it. He He went back and he finished off those dates and everything. Obviously, I think part of that is, you know, WWE at the time was like, we would like to work with New Japan. They were trying to get in on that deal, but it didn't work out. And I think they've they've realized that, you know, a lot of these places she's got dates booked for, you know, they're partnering with AEW and it's just not going to happen with us. So anyway, she is going to WWE and apparently it's like a very, very good deal. So all the best to her. Anybody? Nothing? All right. You're steering this ship. Come we on, throw just it to somebody. On. Well, that's why I just paused quietly to say nothing else. <laughs> hey, Lance, what do you think about Jericho doing CMLL 91st anniversary show against Mystico? I think How that's that? great. He he seems to do a lot of things that uh, are unique, and I think he's really enjoying it. Actually, I talked to him about his uh, cameo in Vietnam for the the Vietnam Vietnamese pro wrestling group, and I'm just like, so random. Jericho likes to keep his feet in as many uh, ponds as he can. And, uh, hey, Mexico was a big break for him, so getting to go back is pretty cool. So that'll be the 91st anniversary show, September 13th for CMLL. And uh, he's facing Mystico, which is a big match. That's a big match. It's a match that could have sold out the building on any given Friday, and they're just adding it to the anniversary show. So that's a big one there. Samoa Joe's out of action. He's going back to film, uh, what's the name of this show? Twisted Metal. On Peacock. Yeah, he plays Sweet Tooth, which I've been told is the best character in the entire uh, series. But they beat him up and laid him out, and he's out for a while. So we'll talk about Dynamite more after the break. Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper Vivi also of WrestlingObserver.com. By the way, should mention that NXT show on Tuesday did a giant number. 656,000 and a point two four. Joe Hendry seems to be a draw. The two times he's been on, we're big. <laughs> it might be Joe Hendry. I think it's a <laughs> lot of stuff, obviously. He's two for two. I mean, we had a follow-up, like, what's Trick going to do? He lost the title. Did they put the title on Ethan Page? They teased throughout the show. The funniest he- thing was, like, they kept begging the fans to say Joe Hendry's name, but they just would not do it. So he finally just showed up anyway. I have the quarter hours come out. Yeah. Okay. From the time that they announced that Javon Evans was hurt and was going to be out, what did the number do? Oh, this again? Yes. <laughs> you look, because you look, if it goes down, you can say, damn it, see, they said it, and people thought he was going to be in the main event, and they all tuned out. Let's or is see. Joe Hendry a bigger star than Javon Evans? Well, uh... <laughs> The highest quarter was the opening quarter, which did 735, and that was setting up the uh, main event, and then it dropped to 664, rose to almost 700 again, and I'm pretty sure that's where uh, he got beaten up, and then it did fall to 634, but I'm listen, I'm not blaming it. Here's the thing, everybody. I'm not saying that the last few weeks was all because of Javon Evans. What I'm saying is that the the declines over the last several weeks was partly because you got people really thinking that this Javon Evans was getting a push, 
and then you yanked out the rug over and over and set up a four-way that people didn't want to see. And that's it. Now the four-way is over. We've got a new champion, Trix the Challenger, and people tuned in to see this match. I wish Lance would. I don't know if you're tuned into this or not, but the guy is getting a push. You just wanted him slingshotted into the stratosphere. Brother, he got beat up and taken out of the tag match. You literally said, if this guy gets beat up on Tuesday, I'll be on the same page as you. And he did, and you're still back on it again. If he gets beaten or pinned, which he did not, it was to set up Joe Henry. He got beaten and and taken out of the main event. I, I, I think Brian's point, even if he doesn't articulate it as well as I think he should, is that Yes, Javon will be fine, but he, there is the opportunity, and you only get it once, to really strap a rocket to somebody and make people think, holy crap, this is a new young sensation. Thank you. He's a big deal. And if you turn around on that, kneecap him at that, wait and hold off till later, he can still become a star. But there is that brand new breakout, you know, holy crap, this guy's a sensational, a phenom, whatever. There is the possibility to really catch someone on fire if they have something special, which I think a lot of people agree Javon does. And the longer you take to light that fuse, I think the spark is a little less bright. I don't know. I think the fuse is lit, and I think they're able to rely on the reaction that he gets and that, you know, does help matters because... For the time being, he has been unsinkable. Now, they may take that away, but he, to me, is as much as you can be as a made man there right now because they had people go up to the main roster. They have new people coming in. They had a shuffle going on that maybe they didn't manage it as well. Maybe they were expecting, obviously, no Amdar's injury and things like that kind of hurt things, but I don't know. I still think I think what's happening with what well, I'm more worried about Braun Breaker on the main roster than I am Javon Evans' position within NXT. Just because there's somebody who I think you could have, you know, done a run with. Yeah, they're both the exact same thing. Like, I agree as well that they dropped the ball by having Sammy beat this guy, and then they go out of their way to try to give him his his heat back. And it's like, it would have been easier to just have him win, and then you don't have to give him his heat back. Because he's probably winning the next time around. And they wanted to make sure that we give Sammy something before we beat him. And I'm curious how big of a star a guy like Javon Evans could be if he was afforded the protection that they give the monsters. Exactly. Those guys that, you know, don't sell much, never get beat, are presented as these indestructible big guys. And they, you know, in the past more so than now, they would protect these guys as they're unbeatable. It's like, you know, you could do that with a smaller guy that's got something and see where it gets gets you. Well, you can also do it with more than one guy at the same time because they are doing that right now with Oba Femi. He is that guy. So, you know, there is that as well, too, where, you know, they're making him stand out so much because now he seems to be oblivious to everyone and everything. So it opens up with Will Ospreay coming down. MJF interrupts, and they set up MJF Ospreay next week on TV free for the international title and uh all of my booking is is uh is set up to me uh, through Wembley and even further on because my presumption when the show is over is MGF is beating Osprey winning the international title beating Pac retaining the international title Osprey gets his rematch at Wembley Osprey gets his big win in front of 40,000 people over MJF everybody is happy so that's my booking there and then the next match was Danielson and Hangman. And I can talk a lot about this tonight. I know a lot of people were upset with the the finish. I can understand. Because, in fact, for those of you that don't recall, I very much argued against bringing Hangman back for the Owen Hart Cup. There's a reason that I said this is a bad idea. You're bringing him back. People are going to want to see him versus Swerve. You're bringing him back to immediately lose after all that time. And, you know, Brian Danielson, we've talked about before, for whatever reason, Dave says it was for a swerve. I don't know. Danielson did all these interviews saying, I don't want to be the world champion. While he is in a match where the winner gets a shot at the world title. And here we are. My presumption is that Brian Danielson beat Swerve in Wembley. 
And then they go on to Wrestle Dream in Tacoma, a hometown hero versus hometown hero match, and Swerve wins the title back there. That's my presumption for where this is going. How Hangman plays into this in the future, who knows? But the Hangman is out. This match was awesome, by the way. Fabulous match. Yeah, it was a great match. I do not like your thought of having both champions lose a quick one just to get it back. Um, I think I would have Swerve win at Wembley and uh, keep Swerve strong. Danielson is Teflon, and he is at the level he is at and will be at that level probably for the rest of his life. Um, I would, uh, I'd give it to Swerve personally. Lance, did Brian ask you if it was okay to use the rolling single leg crab? Um, he didn't, but he commented as soon as he saw me in the building, he knew he was going to do it that night. <laughs> we had the Smojo Jericho Calgary street fight, which spilled into the back. The, uh, entire learning tree attacked Joe. They choke slammed him onto a pallet on a forklift and Jericho drove it through the side of the building. Injury angle to put Jericho out of action for a while. They already put Hook out of action. So uh, they're going on a tear. Put Joe out of action. And Joe out of action. They're going on a... Well, he put Hook out of action, too, last week. Well, Fireball. you said Jericho. Jericho put Hook. It doesn't matter. We're going to get a big six-man or... some point, he'll put himself out of action. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he has at some point. Lance was there, actually. It was a shooting star press in Smoky yeah. Mountain Wrestling. He put himself out of action. No, he didn't. He worked that night. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, then he had to be out of action, right? <laughs> he was out for like a couple weeks. Hey, he put himself out of action. And yes, he broke the walls down yesterday. Then we had a four-way for a international title shot. Pac, Ishii, Kyle Fletcher, and Claudio. And Pac won. There seems to be massive confusion. The story is that Pac gets a future international title shot. He said that he wants it at Wembley. It is not specific for Wembley. I do not think they're doing a multi-person match. I think it's Will Ospreay versus MGF in a single. And however this works out for Pac, and I mean, he can get any match on Wembley. It doesn't have to be for the international title. But I believe that that international title match is going to come prior to Wembley. And MGF will beat him. That is my thought. We had uh, the announcement that Swerve is going to be in uh, Blood and Guts, which led to Hangman wanting to be in Blood and Guts because he's obsessed with exactly one thing, which is taking out Swerve. We had a great simple, it was so simple. Mercedes comes out for a victory toast. She is a total heel. She is miles, light years better as a heel. Hallelujah. Out comes Brit. The place goes crazy. She starts beating up security. And she heads down to the ring. And Mercedes, in her... I thought this was her greatest moment, maybe in her career. The way she fled from the ring was so freaking funny. I was dying. It was the greatest heel run in high heels. Oh, she got her... <laughs> and uh, Britt gets in the ring and, like, the place is going nuts. And that's all they did. And the match felt so big... I thought this segment was great. They didn't need any more than they did. Yeah, when uh, when Mercedes hit uh, claimed to be the best there is, was, and ever will be, um, that pretty much cemented her as the biggest heel in the world in Calgary. And uh, speaking of shredded, Britt looks like a billion dollars, and uh, crowds into her. So yeah, this match feels huge, and that's all they needed. Britt's got a twelve pack, like a legit twelve pack, I believe now with her abs. I'm not even sure you have twelve, but. Uh... She does. Thank I'm pretty sure it. she does. Then we had Mariah and Willow in the Women's Owen Cup final. I thought it was a good match. I thought the finish was great. They did the victory roll finish that Owen used to pin Brett at WrestleMania 10. She wins the tournament. And then, like, they just skip up the ramp together, and she grabs that belt and clobbers Tony. There was no argument. There was no nothing. She got her shot, and so she took out Tony, and Tony bleeds. Luther gets murdered, thrown off the ramp. Tony shoves down Aubrey. I'm sorry, uh, Mariah shoves down Aubrey. And then she kisses Tony and rubs Tony's blood all over her face. Great, great angle. And, you know, it's funny. It's like people had so much fantasy booking for Wembley. And, like, all of their fantasy booking involving the men 
they aren't getting those matches. Yet, like the two hottest matches right now on Wembley, both involve the women. Mercedes and Britt and uh, Mariah May and Tony feel like two of the hottest like rivalries in the entire company, and they both appear to be paying off at Wembley. So I like this a lot. Yeah, this was a real strong, effective angle. And it was good because I always like, it's like, what was the impetus of the turn? And, you know, there wasn't an actual emotional one, but there was the Mariah has been with her from the get go. And she now has her match against Tony. She no longer needs a friend. She needs an opponent to beat. And she turned on Tony and kudos for Tony for, uh, boy, she, she put this angle over strong by, uh, bleeding like crazy. And it was a, a hell of a closing shot and a very effective angle. I will say that if I had one complaint about the show, and it's old school, I would not have had Brian Danielson bleeding in the opener. I would have yep. saved all blood for this. This would have been even more dramatic if it was the only blood we had seen on the entire show. But we did have the, uh, you know, the opening segment where Brian actually gigged it twice. He was bleeding early, and then he took a pile driver on the floor, and he, he bled again from a different point in his head. And, you know, Brian Danielson sells great. It would, have, it would have been just as good a match without the blood, and you could have saved it for this segment here to have it have even more impact. But Was oh, was Hangman bleeding? I think he might have hard weight, or maybe it was just I Danielson's think it was all of all Danielson's blood on him. But it was also a lot up here in his hair, so he could have got he could have got a hard way. But Yeah, they, they worked hard. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. How many students did you have last night there, Lance? Mm, I think four or five of them. Wow. I, I know at least one worked on Collision. Uh, I saw him in the ring before I left. I didn't stay for the entire show because they're fairly long, and I'm old. But, uh, yeah, Brady, uh, again, he went through my school, and he got super kicked by Britt. And I know at least one that wrestled on uh, Collision. So, And I was two others there for sure, and I think there might have been another, yeah. You ever miss your school? I don't really. Like, I enjoyed it, but... Being a uh, producer at TNA fulfills my wrestling needs. I enjoy the creative process. I get to work with talent regularly. So I'm I'm happy in TNA, and I don't desire going back to a school. Hey, wait, it's Thursday. Didn't TNA come on on Thursday? Yeah, let's get some plugs in, brother. TNA Impact tonight at 8 o'clock. Access TV in the U.S., Fight Network in Canada, and it also airs um, – live or in the same same time slot on tna plus if you're a subscriber to that so uh, check it out there's um some big matches tonight all right well lance i want to thank you for doing the show here today lance is up with a figure four daily most every week although during the summer who knows how it's going to end up and uh i will be back tomorrow you know what that means mike What's that mean? Fun Friday. Oh man. Oh man, it's going to be awesome. We're going to take Tremendous. some calls and uh, some text messages and talk all the news. Always a good time on Fun Friday here at Wrestling Observer Live. I want to thank Mike as always, Lance, all my great Twitch homies, all you paying folks who are not cretins, and of course everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you next time Wrestling Observer Live.